Hey everybody, it's Brian Polito. Uh, I am a comic book creator most known for founding Chaos Comics and I am the publisher of Coffin Comics, creator of Lady Death, Evil Learning, and a whole bunch of stuff. I've been in the game for about 28 years. Uh, but today I'm coming in before you for a whole different reason. Uh, in addition to being a comic book creator, I'm actually a very active comic book collector. And today, this month, I'm actually celebrating collecting Captain America for 45 years without fail. So today what this broadcast is about is my love of Captain America. Why? I'm going to go take a look through some Captain America comics and objects, and I'm going to ruminate a little bit. But first up, let's get right into it. First up, this is the one, Captain America 176, published in August of 1974. I walked into a pharmacy in Long Branch, New Jersey on Norwood Avenue, and I saw this one on the spinner rack. Now, it's pretty fascinating that this would be the first Captain America comic I got because this is the one where he actually quit. If you remember, this particular storyline capped off a storyline where he is Captain America no more. He was disillusioned to learn that at the very top of uh, the seat of government were some nefarious bad guys. So very interesting. My, my collecting of comics in general and Captain America in particular started when he quit. So I actually think that I've gone back and that I've collected comics longer than that, but I, I kind of use this as the benchmark of the formal collecting. So I'm going to show you some of the Captain Americas that I really enjoy that I've personally collected. Now this one, Strange Tales 114, is pretty cool because it's the quote-unquote first appearance of Captain America in the modern Marvel era, but it's not really Captain America. There's a guy dressed up as Captain America named the Acrobat, and rumor has it that uh, Marvel is sort of trying out the idea of bringing Captain America back and using this guy as a, as a way. So beautiful cover. Uh, really happy to have that one. Really happy to have all the ones I'm about to show you. Big Daddy. You know, uh, here you go. Avengers number four. This is my personal copy. Um, this is the return of Captain America in the modern Marvel age. Also reaccounted in the recent motion pictures. What makes this particular copy fun is I got it when I was about 26 years old, I think. And I got it at a place called Interstate Video World in Hoboken, New Jersey. This place sold video, rented videotapes, uh, had long boxes of comic books, and sold ice cream. So I think I got this thing for less than 10 bucks. Uh, it's just one of those great magical moments. I don't know that if it's the best copy of the world. It's actually a pretty good looking copy, but there it is. Avengers number four, personal fave. So early on in Captain America's career at Marvel Comics, when he was uh, reborn out of the ice, he appeared in some other comics, uh, including Daredevil. That was a pretty cool one. But here's one where he appeared with uh, Sergeant Fury and Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos. And this is a beautiful Jack Kirby cover, Jack Kirby being the artist. And I'm trying to guess who might be the who might be the anchor. Hard to guess sometimes back then. I also like all the logos and the trade dress on these old comics. They're they're amazing. So uh, it's another great one that I enjoy having. Now I want to give you my bona fides. Uh, here actually is uh, a badge from me attending one of my first comic book conventions in 1974 in New York, the Phil Suling Comic Art Convention. I think that's what it was called. Yeah, New York Comic Con of some sort, um, 1974. And recently, uh, a friend of mine, Chris Flum, actually re-gifted me this beautiful program from that exact show. This is a Jack Kirby, Joe Simon uh, image of their first ever Captain America drawing from back in the golden age of comics in the 40s when Captain America first appeared. So thank you, Chris, for this. This is very thoughtful, and it does tie into this exact show. So I'm actually a complete uh, Captain America collector up to and including the Secret War storyline. So I'm not going to show you all of them because that would take a while. However, more, more of them that I think are pretty cool. Here's one. This is Tales of Suspense uh, number, is it 58? Yep, 58. And this is where they have Captain America appear in Iron Man's storyline. These two have a battle. And I, I don't know if this was a test or not, but then this did ultimately lead to Tales of Suspense number 59, where Captain America shares shares the stage with Iron Man. And this book from number 59 to number 99, actually, the two shared the book, and it's actually a lot of fun stories drawn by Jack Kirby, written by Stan Lee and others, and 
it, it's neat. Uh, some of my recollections of these. Now, since I started uh, collecting Captain America in 1974, by 1978, I had actually had a complete run, including these uh, Tales of Suspense, etc. And what I recall enjoying about these was Captain America being reimagined as a high-tech James Bond-like character, and then also this neat series of villains that the Red Skull, uh, Captain America's arch villain, would wake up, and they were called the Sleepers. And the Sleepers would be woken up by the Red Skull, and they'd be crazy looking. Sometimes they're Look like skulls or skulls with wings or just giant non-speaking beasts and I've always enjoyed those. Uh, several years ago I actually got a chance to talk to um, Ed Brubaker and I was asking him, I was like, dude, are you going to bring back this, the sleepers? Because uh, he was, you know, doing a kind of straight spy thriller and Ed Brubaker was a popular Captain America writer uh, within the last decade and he did say he would and he did actually in one of the Captain America annuals and it was a very good story. So this is the one and only Captain America number 100. You may ask yourself, where was number one through 99? Well, it didn't work that way. It was actually Tales of Suspense, one through 99, and then it flipped over. It became Captain America number 100. Uh, they rolled off and Iron Man got his own number one. Cap got the number 100, but still a really fun book. Love it. And in that early run of Captain America, it was a very popular comic book creator slash designer slash artist named Jim Steranko. A lot of us know, uh, know and adore Steranko. He's around to this day and he is a great guy to meet. When you meet him, he treats you like uh, you're the only person on earth. He had a very small run on Captain America, but it was remarkable. He also had a run on S.H.I.E.L.D., incredible stuff. Um, I actually had Steranko sign these books during this 1974 era. And if I'm, is this the one? No, this may not be it. So in this early 1974 era, I have another example of the Steranko stuff. And here, uh, Steranko signed on the cover, which actually is sort of unusual back then. Back then when we collected comic books, we usually asked the artist or sometimes the writer to sign on the inside on what we call the indicia. So there's Steranko on the cover. I think I got this somewhere like circa 1976. I was at Penn Plaza and they had Steranko in his own room, which was kind of cool. Walked in there and had him sign these. Good old Jim Steranko. Um, Captain America's had a long run, and I'm still going back, but this is the first appearance of Falcon, a.k.a. Sam Wilson. You guys and gals out there probably know him from the movies, but I've actually known Sam Wilson, a.k.a. the Falcon, for God, close to all my reading years of Captain America. I'd always say if, anyone's, if uh, anyone other than Steve Rogers was to be Captain America, it should be Sam, but I really like uh, Steve Rogers being Captain America the most. But this was a really cool... A uh, cool cover, the first appearance, and led to a really long run of these guys in partnership uh, along with um, Falcons, Falcon, Red Wing. Cool stuff. I'm going to jump around a little bit and show you some oddball stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not the biggest collector of 3D stuff. I have a couple pieces, but I just, I've just always been obsessed with paper goods. So here's, here's an interesting item. So Marvel did this series of comic books that came with a record. And that's exactly what this is. So this is a particular comic book. And in the back, it came with a little record. And it's been a long time since I've heard this record. I'm not sure really what's on it, but I thought that was kind of cool. And they did it for some other characters too, but the one I focused on was Captain America. Another neat thing that they did with Captain America is these little novels. And I love the cover of this particular novel. Classic image of Red Skull, Captain America in action. So that's, that's another one. Here's something I think is particularly odd. And maybe someone out there could help me. But here's a Captain America comic. That's, this is a bite-sized little dude. And it is a comic book. And it actually has panels in it and in everything. And I just don't recall how I got a hold of it. Or what its original purpose was. Was it in a box of cereal? I don't really know. Um, and, you know, Captain America, again, 45 years plus. I'm jumping up a little bit, and I'm jumping all the way to issue number 193. And this featured the return of the one and only co-creator of Captain America, Jack Kirby. So this uh, was the beginning of this crazy storyline he did called Mad Bomb. And this image is very popular. You see it reproduced in all kinds of things, like metal tins. You could walk into, like, any store in America, and this image is outrageously reproduced. But uh, 
is the beginning of a really fun and weird and strange uh, run by Jack Kirby, where he brings his patented wild super science and supernatural craziness. And I really enjoyed that storyline. Now, I am jumping from 194 all the way to uh, 254. I think this was another renaissance in Captain America. This particular cover is by uh, John Byrne. And if I recall correctly, guys like Roger Stern were writing Captain America. And also, I must mention, earlier on was a writer named Steve Englehart who wrote tremendous Captain Americas. I think that's where I started with Cap back in 176. But um, this was a great run. Roger Stern, John Byrne, really a lot of fun. Um, now, strangely, I'm jumping decades. There was a long decade known run by a guy named Mark Grunewald, rest in peace, where he introduced Crossbones, Sin, the Serpent Society, all fun books, even the crazy Cap Wolf. Um, but I digress. Uh, just another cool, odd Captain America item that I adore is Captain America's Bicentennial Battles. This is a format called Treasury Editions, and Marvel did these, and even DC did these. You'll recall books like Spider-Man versus Superman, but they would actually reprint some of their seminal storylines, and they look so great in this giant format. In this particular storyline has Captain America traipsing all over the world. And I, am I spotting this correctly? But it looks like, yeah, this, this particular, some of this book is actually inked by Barry Windsor Smith, a uh, fantastic artist, probably most known for Conan, early Conan. Uh, but this was super wild and, you know, standard Kirby madness. Uh, a fun book, cool back cover. And back then, these books, this was $1.50. So, whoops, so you can just imagine, whoops, can't take me anywhere. You can imagine just how much fun it was as a kid to get a hold of those. Kind of having a sense memory that the first time I read that, it was sort of a summertime and I was visiting family in Ohio. Um, but now I'm going to jump back to some more recent Captain Americas. Uh, this is sort of special to me. A friend of mine named David Harrigan actually did this nice sketch cover for me. And this sketch cover phenomenon is part of the modern era. And I think he did a great job. So this is Chris Evans as Captain America. Really appreciate uh, Dave doing that for me. He's very thoughtful. Um, a more recent Captain America storyline within the last five years that I personally really enjoyed was uh, written by Rick Remender. And this was uh, Dimension Z. The storyline lasted for about 13 issues. And this really represents a fun, a fun storyline because Captain America actually goes to an entirely other dimension that is created by his longtime arch enemy, one of his arch enemies named Arnim Zola. And the entire planet is pitted against him. And the story takes place over a period of time, like over a decade. He has children. It's, it's very doomy at times, but included crazy super science. And big shout out to this guy, Rick Remender. I don't know him, but that was a super fun storyline. I would be remiss if we talked about Captain America and I didn't show you my Captain America Marvel Cup. Um, some of you may know me as a Marvel Cup collector. That is absolutely true. I'm aggressively recollecting them. What makes this particular cup kind of fun is I actually got it at 7-Eleven when it came out. And that was probably, again, about 1970, well, 75. So this is the one I drank some Slurpee out of and uh, makes me want to have a Slurpee. Um, so in conclusion of this particular so what does Captain America mean to me? What I like about Captain America is he seems to be a man out of time, but I just like what he stands for, and he's clearly a hero. Um, I do like ambiguous characters like Batman, but it's pretty clear that Captain America is a good guy. And those are my favorite stories, when people keep him a good guy. So I'm going to make a little comment on some of the current storylines. So um, current storyline of the Captain America the last couple of years, really not my favorite. Um, I'm not going to down people too hard, but I'll explain to you exactly why. Um, there were storylines like uh, Secret Empire, where Captain America was cast as a bad guy, and he stayed that way for over a year. And there was even a storyline where Captain America died under Ed Brubaker's tutelage. I just don't like stories like that. Um, and in this particular current storyline, we're in the uh, aftermath of Captain America being seen as a bad guy. He's actually on trial for murder. Now, just my one guy's opinion. My favorite comics came from the 70s and 80s, sorry. And they're kind of, they're, they're like one and done or two and done or three and done. Heroes are heroes. Um, what I don't like about the current storyline is it seems like uh, forces are put upon Captain America and he's recast. It'd be really awesome if we could get back to that. Just, you know, a simple, simple 
good-natured hero who goes through trials and tribulations to overcome great odds and just be heroic. In fact, I mean, my favorite Captain America comics of the last five years have been the Marvel films. So uh, I like those. If we get back to that, that's great. That's just, just one man's personal taste. So guys and gals out there, thank you so much for uh, checking in with me on my personal odyssey of collecting Captain America for 45 years, beginning with issue number 176. Uh, this is probably just the tip of the iceberg of my collecting, but Cap's my dude, and yeah, without fail, man, whether I've been like a struggling high school student, poor college guy, fresh out of college, I always had that 20 or 35 cents to get my Captain America comic book and uh, get him every month. So you guys have been great. I've been Brian Polito. Thanks for hearing me out on my anniversary of cap collecting Captain America for 45 years. Thank you.